It's R vs Python. In this video, we're gonna compare R versus Python in how they both deal with the normal distribution. If you already know R and are transitioning over to Python, this is the video for you. Or vice versa, you're gonna love it. And before we get started, please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support. Let's get into it. Okay, over here on the left side, we have R in our Jupyter Notebook. And over here on the right side, we're gonna have Python in a Jupyter Notebook as well. So let's start with R. We're gonna run this pnorm function. pnorm takes in a value, the mean, and the standard deviation for the normal distribution, and it returns the probability of that value. Now you can see the second comment I have there is actually how you run the same thing in Python with norm.cdf. So norm.cdf, you plug in four, the loc, which is your mean, and scale, which is your standard deviation. So let's go ahead and run that in our Python side. And you see we get the same number with the exception of a few more decimal places in Python. Okay, moving on to qnorm, which is actually the inverse of what we just did. So instead of giving it a value, you give it a probability, and it will return the value associated with that probability. In Python to do this, you can see in my comment there, norm.ppf. So you can give it 0.5, loc equals 5, and scale equals 2. So it will have the same mean and standard deviation. Let's run this in Python and we get 5.0. Just like we did in R, we got 5. Now, let's suppose you want a random draw from a normal distribution. In R, you do this with R norm. You say you want three random draws from a normal with mean 5 and standard deviation 2. In Python, you can do this with np.random.normal. You give it the mean and standard deviation first. And last, you give it the size, so we do size equals three. So over here in Python, there's just another random sample of normals and it returns as an array. Don't forget that the size is at the end, so size equals three is the last parameter. There is another function in R called dnorm, which gives you the value of the PDF of the normal. So you can give it two, mean equals zero, standard deviation equals one, and that's the number it spits back, 0 0.05. In Python, the equivalent to do this is norm.pdf, which makes a lot of sense that they called it PDF since that's exactly what it's doing. And you can give it two, loc equals zero, scale equals one, and that should give us the exact same thing. Let's just double check that. We'll run it here, 0 0.05, perfect. And of course, the PDF in both of these cases is mostly useful for plotting the normal distribution. So in R over here, we're gonna plot the normal distribution. Let's go ahead and run that. This is what it's gonna look like. A nice, beautiful plot. So what we do is we create a domain with X is equal to a sequence from negative four to four with length equals 100. And then we do plot of our domain against our function d norm with x plugged into it, mean equals zero, standard deviation equals two, just for this example. And in R, you have to specify that you want the type to be a line. Now take a look at those comments we have for the Python code. We have x equals np dot lin space negative four to four with a length of 100 as well. So that's doing the same thing as our sequence in R. And then we have plt dot plot, which comes from the matplotlib library and it works the exact same you just give it x for the domain and then the function norm.pdf of x with the loc equals zero and scale equal to two we don't have to specify that this is a line so let's go ahead and run that in python it defaults to this nice blue color and we can go ahead and compare these two beautiful bell curves they both go up to about 0.2 and of course go from negative four to four so that's very similar ways in how you can plot these normal distributions in R and in Python. Thank you so much for watching this video on R vs Python. If you want to see other R vs Python videos, take a look at this playlist I have right here. It's all about statistics in Python, and there's a lot of videos that compare methods in R versus Python, including the ANOVA method.